Planning Elevated, or FPE, is a statewide contraceptive initiative based at the University of Utah. The goal of FPE is to improve contraceptive access for Utahns. Put simply, the FPE team dreams of a world where all contraceptive methods are available to all people whenever they want them. We know that is a lofty goal, but thanks to the support of FPE's generous donors, we are able to work towards that goal by supporting clinics across the state to provide free contraceptive care to their qualifying clients. Our work with clinics is called the FPE Contraceptive Access Program, or FPE CAP. Since you'll be involved in connecting patients with free FPE CAP services at your clinic, we would like to give you an overview of the FPE CAP program. What is FPE CAP? FPE CAP is a partnership between our FPE team and 28 clinics across the state. FPE CAP clinics like yours receive support from FPE in the following ways. Number one, a cash grant. Two, technical support. Three, method stocking. Four, methods reimbursement. Five, reimbursement for services. Cash grant. FP provides each clinic or organization, if you have multiple clinics, with a cash grant. This cash grant funds any initial, initial family planning supplies, such as IUD insertion or removal instruments or an autoclave, as well as any personnel costs required to implement the program. Technical support. Staff members at FPE CAP sites have access to a range of technical offerings and clinical support. Dr. Jessica Lewis Caperell and Dr. David Turok are available, available to provide training on IUD and implant insertions and removals. You can work with the FPE staff to schedule a training. Additionally, Dr. Lewis Caperell is available to consult on difficult contraceptive cases or provide proctoring support for providers who would like the extra guided practice. In addition to the in-person trainings, FPE also conducts interactive webinars on a range of contraceptive topics. To view recordings of past webinars, please go to FPE's website, myfpe.org, and then navigate to the Providers tab. To be notified of upcoming webinars and other technical offerings, please subscribe to the link uh, that will be in the PDF to be added to FPE's monthly emails. Method stocking. In furtherance of our mission, all methods available to all people, FPE directly supplies many contraceptive methods to your clinic. Each clinic has FPE stock of the following methods. Paragard, Marina, Kylina, Skyla, Nexplanon, external and internal condoms, VCF gel spermicide, Kaya diaphragm, along with the Kaya diaphragm test fit units, fem caps, and natural cycle kits. If you discover that your clinic is out of a particular method, please contact your clinic administrator who can request additional methods from FPE. While FPE directly stocks clinics with some methods, you may have noticed the list of stocked methods is missing quite a few options. For those remaining methods, pills, patches, rings, depot injection, plan B and Ella, Clients will need to acquire them through a pharmacy and FPE will reimburse the clinics for the cost of the methods. Because our program aims to reduce financial barriers for clients, we do not ask patients to pay up front and be reimbursed for their methods. Rather, each clinic has set up a way for the patients to not pay out of pocket for their methods from the pharmacy. At some clinical sites, this means patients are given a gift card to use at the pharmacy. Other sites have an in-house pharmacy where the patients can receive their methods. Because the means of patient procurement are different at each clinical site, please ask your clinic administrator for details on how clients at your clinic can receive their free pill, patch, or ring, or EC. FPE reimburses clinics for contraceptive counseling, insertion, and removal of IUDs and implants. Information and fitting for diaphragms and cervical caps, depot injections, and STI screening for IUD insertions. Reimbursement of services also includes vasectomy. Now you know what FPE does to support your clinic, but what does FPE ask for in return? A lot. 
we ask clinics to one, determine who is eligible for FPE cap services, two, explain FPE cap to the patients, three, support the patient in identifying the contraceptive method that is the best fit for them, four, ensure the patient receives the method they selected free of cost, five, invite patients to participate in client exit surveys, six, provide service delivery data back to FPE, seven, submit billing data for services and methods provided. To be eligible for FPE, a client needs to be between the ages of 12 and 50 and 21 to 65 for vasectomy clients, not eligible for Medicaid, either because they are undocumented or make too much money to qualify for Medicaid between 139 to 250% federal poverty level, or someone who does not have contraceptive coverage through any existing insurer. To determine eligibility for FPE, we do not require a client to provide evidence of their income or documentation status, but you can ask them how many people are in their household and how much money they are making in a month or use our handy chart to identify whether they qualify. Sometimes you may have a client who might not qualify for FPE according to the existing rules, but who probably would not otherwise get contraception. For example, a 20 year old who is on their parents' insurance, but won't get an IUD because they don't want it to be billed to their parents. In those circumstances, you can give the person the method they want and then fill out FPE's exception form. This form will give us the information we need to ensure that you don't get billed on the back end for these special cases. You can tell qualifying patients that the FPE program is a statewide contraceptive initiative through the University of Utah. Our program allows patients to receive any contraceptive method at no cost, with the exception of female sterilization, which we do not cover. You can assure patients that if they receive their method through FPE, we do not collect any identifiable data on them and that participating in FPE does not count as government assistance. You can also let them know that if they try a method and don't like it, our program encourages them to come back and try something else, also at no cost. At FPE, we are big believers that patients are experts in determining the method that is right fit for them and their lives. We also know finding the right fit can be a journey where the patient may try on several different methods. If you are involved in contraceptive counseling as an MA or a provider, we highly recommend these quality family planning resources. As you probably caught on by now, our goal is that patients do not have any out-of-pocket costs for their contraceptive methods. For methods that FPE directly stocks, connecting patients with their method is as simple as knowing where your clinic keeps the FPE stocked items and ensuring you supply the patient from that stock. FPE stocks the following methods directly. Paragard, Mirena, Kylina, Skyla, Nexplanon, external and internal condoms, VCF gel spermicide, Kaya diaphragm, along with Kaya diaphragm test fit units, femcaps, and natural cycle kits. Clinics order Depo-Provera and Lyleta directly and then submit to FPE for reimbursement. Connecting patients with methods that require a prescription, birth control pills, patch, or vaginal ring is a bit different from site to site. Some clinics have an on-site pharmacy where patients can receive their methods. Some clinics have gift cards, which the patients can use at a local pharmacy, and others may connect patients with methods using a mail order pharmacy please ask the administrative staff at your clinic to explain how your patients can receive their prescription methods at no cost. We are interested in patient experience at our clinics. We have designed a client exit survey to help us gather this information. These surveys are open to, to any patient who is seen for a contraceptive visit, regardless of whether or not the eligible, they are eligible for FPE. Examples of questions asked on the survey include whether this is a patient's first time visiting the clinic, what contraceptive method they left with, whether the method they left with was their first choice of method, and how they paid for their method through insurance, through another payment assistance program, including FPE or with cash. We ask the clinics to administer surveys at certain intervals during the program. Please work with the rest of the clinic staff to ensure that patients are offered the survey. 
Every month, FPE collects service delivery data from your clinic on all patient visits among female clients ages 12 to 50. These data reports are pulled directly from your electronic health record system and contain all of the diagnostic and procedural codes associated with each visit, as well as the patient demographic data associated with each visit. The data reports do not include any identifying patient data. By sorting this information on Claim ID, a unique ID that your clinic uses to bill insurance companies, FPE is able to collect the data we need without collecting any protected health information. By collecting data on all female patients ages 12 to 50, FPE is able to track the provision of contraceptive services at your clinic each month, including the proportion of total services among women of reproductive age that these contraceptive services make up. Each month, we ask you to your clinic to submit billing data for contraceptive services and methods provided to FPE patients in the last month. This is submitted through a data software program. The, data, the billing data that you provide is de-identified. Only claim ID numbers are provided. This means we do not track whether the same patient is receiving services over and over again, only that they are eligible under the FPE program. The FPE team then reviews all the claims submitted to confirm that they fit within the FPE eligibility criteria, and we are then able to send reimbursement directly to your clinics for those services and methods. We know that's a lot of information to cover, and you might have quite a few questions. We have compiled a list of some of the most common questions clinic staff have about FPE. Hopefully, these are some of the same questions that you have. If not, you can always reach out to the FPE staff with any additional questions, and we will provide a contact information at the end of the slideshow. Does your program require patients to provide proof of income? No. While we do ask that clinics assess patient income, verbal testament of income is sufficient for FPE cap eligibility determination. Another question we get often is, what if someone doesn't fit the FPE eligibility criteria, but I know they are facing significant financial barriers to receiving contraceptive care? In rare cases, a clinic may determine that it's in the best interest of a patient to extend FPE cap eligibility to a patient falling outside of the normal parameters of FPE cap eligibility due to income, insurance status, or age. Please use the FPE cap exception form to document such exceptional cases. Clinics may provide contraceptive services with confidence in receiving reimbursement for methods and services provided. However, FPE will routinely review cases and may limit the number of allowable, allowable exceptions if deemed excessive. To view current uh, FPE cap eligibility parameters, visit myfpe.org backslash patients backslash hashtag eligibility. Are there really patients who want a diaphragm? Yes. One of the reasons FPE believes in offering all methods is because our previous research has shown that people tend to want different methods at different times in their lives, and that changes in, in circumstances can also affect what method someone might want. The more methods a person has to try, the more likely it is that they'll find something that will work for their particular situation and desires. Diaphragms are non-hormonal, durable, and effective methods of contraception. Some people love them. What happens when FPE cap ends? Each FPE cap clinic is enrolled in the program for two years. After those years, clinics graduate from the program. While this graduation means that clinics will no longer receive reimbursement for providing contraception, they will still have access to many of FPE's ongoing technical offerings and support. After the two years is over, clinics will have one additional year to provide no cost removals of IUDs and implants. To qualify for no cost removals, patients need to meet the same eligibility requirements that exist for FPE, but do not need to have had their IUD or implant placed using the FPE CAP program. FPE will reimburse clinics for the cost of FPE eligible removals. What is FPE doing with the data they collect from clinics? 
FPE takes the reports from your electronic health records and uses them to look at long-term contraceptive trends over the course of our program in comparison to clinics in the state who do not have FPE. This data allows us to show donors, policymakers, and others how important it is to offer no-cost contraceptive care to people who currently feel, fall in the coverage gap. The client exit surveys we collect help us understand client perspectives on their contraceptive experience, as well as let us know if clients coming to the clinic have seen our media campaign. Both data pieces are critical to our program, so thank you for supporting our data collection process. The FPE cap cover emergency contraception? Yes, there are currently four types of emergency contraception, or EC, and FPE cap covers each of them. Copper IUD, Paragard. One of the most effective forms of EC, the copper IUD should be placed within five days of last unprotected sex. Leave an agestral IUD, the Liletta or Mirena. The 52 milligram LNG IUD is also extremely effective at preventing pregnancy when placed within five days. Ulipristal acetate oral EC pill or ELLA. ELLA can be taken up to five days after having unprotected sex, although it is more effective the earlier a patient takes it. ELLA is more effective than Plan B, particularly for patients who weigh 155 pounds or more, though it may lose effectiveness in patients weighing more than 195 pounds. ELLA requires a prescription. Leave an adjustral EC pill or Plan B. Plan B can be taken up to five days after unprotected sex, but is more effective if taken within three days. Plan B does not require a prescription and may, be, may not be effective for patients who, may, who weigh more than 155 pounds. Does FPE cover vasectomies? How does that work? Yes, a vasectomy is a covered procedure under FPE cap, both the consultation and the procedure. The same patient eligibility guidelines apply with the exception of age. For vasectomy, clients must be 21 to 64 years old. If you have an interested client, you can refer them to one of two FPE CAP clinics providing vasectomy. Patients can call CHC Central City Clinic or CHC Oakerview Clinic to request to schedule a pre-op consultation for vasectomy. CHC clinics typically see patients for a pre-op consultation first and then schedule a vasectomy procedure for a different day. Therefore, it is helpful to let your patient know in advance that the procedure likely won't happen the same day as their pre-op visit although exceptions are occasionally made on a case-by-case -case basis. You can reach out to Dr. Andy Garrison at the CHC Central City Clinic or Dr. Dave Gontram at CHC, CHC Oakerview if you have questions about the scheduling or the procedure itself. To get started with FPE CAP, please be sure you can locate the following in your clinic. Patient method education sheet. We have an FPE branded sheet if you would like to use it. The iPad or tablet used for client exit surveys. The stock of FPE methods, including Paragard, Marina, Kylina, Skyla, Nexplanon, external and internal condoms, including latex free condoms, VCF gel spermicide, Kaya diaphragm, along with Kaya diaphragm test fit units, femcaps, and natural cycle kits. You may also have today's sponge stock through FPE. The supply is currently limited nationwide. While our FPE team is much larger than the individuals shown here, we have included the folks you are most likely to communicate with as part of the program. For a list of our entire team and the rest of the gorgeous headshots, please see our FPE website. Caitlin Quaid is our FPE program director. While Caitlin is happy to lead FPE's big picture de decisions, she is insistent that her favorite part of being director is her communications with clinics. Please feel free to reach out to Caitlin with any questions you have. Her particular areas of expertise include person-centered contraceptive care, guiding clinics through the process of licensing for in-clinic dispensing, and providing technical support on a range of contraceptive topics. Please contact her by email at caitlin.quaid at hsc.utah.edu. Alex Jero, our research associate. Alex is the only person, aside from FPE's director of evaluation, who can make sense of all the service delivery data. You could reach out to Alex with any questions about submitting the service delivery data or any questions about the client exit surveys. Basically, if it has to do with data, Alex is your person. 
Her areas of expertise include navigating the complicated world of EHRs, problem solving barriers to administering client exit surveys, and convincing folks that data isn't really all that scary. Please contact her by email at alexandra.giro at hsc.utah.edu. Jessica Lewis Caprol, our nurse practitioner, is FPE's clinical training specialist and perhaps the kindest person we have ever met. Jessica is available to patiently and supportively proctor and train providers in counseling on and providing all types of reversible contraceptive methods. She is also available to consult on complex contraceptive cases, such as difficult insertions or removals. Her areas of expertise include basically every aspect of providing contraceptive care to patients. Please contact her by email at jessica.lewis.caprol at hsc.utah.edu. Jamie Bade, our FPE program manager, hopes you don't think of her exclusively as the FPE team, team member who sends you the most emails, though you may be hearing from her quite often. Please reach out to Jamie with any questions you have. Her particular areas of expertise include simulation training, your clinic may be receiving one, answering operational questions, and connecting you to individuals who can answer your question if she cannot. Please contact her by email at jamie.bade at hsc.utah.edu. Maddie Mulholland is our administrative manager. Maddie wears many hats on the FPE team, but you will probably hear from her most in her role as the person leading the media campaign for your site. You can reach out to Maddie with any questions about the media campaign, the process of inputting data into a SEMEO, or with questions about billing or reimbursement. Her particular areas of expertise include contraceptive coding, communications, and any questions about Utah's Reproductive Justice Advisory Board. Please contact her by email at madeline.mulholland at hsc.utah.edu. And Erica Torres is our project facilitator. Erica is the person who can help you with all things related to methods restocking and reimbursement. She is the one who will ensure you have the methods you need when you need them. And you can reach out to her with any questions you have about methods stocking or reimbursement. Her particular areas of expertise include methods restocking and reimbursement and any questions about Utah's Reproductive Advisory Board as well as questions about FPE's contraceptive training conferences. Please contact her by email at erica.torres at hsc.utah.edu. Congratulations for making it to the end of the slideshow. Please reach out to any of the FPE team with questions you have about the program. We look forward to working with you.